Welcome to Electron Online, and that, now let's do an example of how to calculate the force associated with the drag coefficient. In other words, let's drop a small sphere in a liquid and let's watch it fall down. And so as it falls down, but rather slowly of course, because it's being buoyed up by three forces. One is the buoyancy force, one is the viscosity of the fluid, and one is the drag coefficient. So let's just simply find the force associated with the drag coefficient. And the drag coefficient is caused by the object having to push aside fluid as it goes on down. It has to push the fluid out of the way, so it has to give momentum to the fluid. It has to push it out of the way, so there's all kind of forces involved to be able to do that. And that force is, of course, caused by the shape of the object and the drag coefficient associated with that shape. Now, let's say that the sphere is pretty small, a small metal sphere. Let's say the radius is one millimeter. And let's say that the fluid is water and that the velocity, let's say it reaches thermal velocity and it's, it's moving down at a speed of 5 centimeters per second. So what would be the force associated with that drag coefficient? Well, the equation is right here, so that means that the force is equal, the force caused by the drag coefficient is equal to 1 half times the coefficient times the density of the fluid times the cross-sectional area and times the velocity squared. So plug in some numbers and let's see what we get. So this is equal to 1 half times for a sphere, the drag coefficient is 0.47, as you could see in the previous video. So it's 0 0.47. It has no units, the drag coefficient. The density of water is equal to 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. The cross-sectional area, well, let's see here. That would, it's a sphere, so it's kind of like the cross-section of a sphere, which is the, the area of a circle that would be pi times r squared and r is 0 0.001 meters, so we have to square that, one millimeter is one one thousand of a meter, and then finally the velocity squared, so in this case the velocity is 0 0.05 meters per second, and we have to square that. Now, I'm assuming that all these units put together will give us newtons, we'll check that in just a moment. So going ahead and work all that out, so we have 0.5 times 0.47 times 1,000 times pi times 0 0.001 squared, 0 0.001 squared times, and then we have 0 0.05 squared, 0 0.05 squared equals, and let me put on my glasses so I can see what I'm doing here. All right, so the force would be equal to 1.85 times 10 to the minus 6 newtons. Now let's check, the, let's check the units and make sure that the units do come out to newtons. Remember, a newton, if you look at the units, that's equal to a kilogram times meters per second squared. So it's the force that gives a mass of one kilogram, the acceleration of one meter per second squared. So let's see what we get for units here. So I have kilograms, meters cubed, so multiply the times meters squared, multiply times meters squared divided by second squared and that is it so let's see if that adds up to the proper units so we have meters squared gets rid of two of those uh, this goes down to that and that looks like it's kilograms meters per second squared so that's indeed units of newton so the units work out as well so that's how we calculate that notice for very small objects that have a very small cross section less than one square meter notice that as the cross-section gets smaller, the drag coefficient gets much, much smaller as well. And then also notice that if the speed is very slow, the drag coefficient again is very small. So you can see that for a very small sphere, the drag coefficient is really insignificant and that doesn't really play a factor. And I'm sure that the buoyancy force and the viscosity of fluid has a much greater influence on the movement of the small sphere than the drag coefficient. It's only when the object becomes bigger and that the velocity becomes bigger that the drag coefficient really starts playing a role. So in the next video, we're going to compare what the force due to the viscosity of fluid looks like under similar circumstances compared to the drag coefficient. And we can see which one becomes more important. And then we'll do an example where maybe we'll drop a big bowling ball into a bucket of water or a big object of water because, of course, bowling ball needs a little bit more room. And we'll see how the drag coefficient then compares to the viscosity, the force associated with viscosity coefficient. All right, but that's how we calculate the force associated with the drag coefficient. Fairly straightforward, and you can see how it does really depend on the velocity and on the cross-sectional area of the object. And that's how we do that.